and nothing could be more magnificent for the kingdom of Israel when Solomon ascended the throne and built the temple. But what happens? The people departed from the truth. The people departed from honoring God, Yahweh. And so God raised up this prophet, Elijah, and he spoke to the people, and he brought them back to their senses, if you will. So notice how history repeats itself. Even this great land of America has reached a pinnacle of progress, if you will, and yet have we abandoned the truth of God. So God will raise up prophets in this day. And notice how, as we remember what Elijah, this great prophet, did after the people departed from the truth, he dealt with the false prophets of Baal. And we can read in Chronicles how he took them to task and challenged them to a duel of sorts, challenged them to invoke their false god, offering the sacrifice, and he mocks them and because they're unable to invoke the grace and the power of God. And so then he says, well, put the burnt offering, put the offering on this altar of stone and pour water over it, not once, not twice, three times. And then he calls upon God and like fire descends on the burnt, on the offering, consumes the offering, the water, and manifests who is the true God of Israel and deals with the prophets, the false prophets of Baal and has them, 450 of them, slaughtered at the River Jordan. And then what happens? Jezebel hears that this prophet has risen in Israel and is seething with anger. And she says, I'm going to have my retribution. And Elijah runs away in fear. Notice how he manifests our dilemma. If we rise up with courage and yet are accused, we too falter. We, because in our brokenness, we falter and become afraid. And so Elijah retreats and he goes to avoid Jezebel and he goes into the mountains and he hides in the cliff, in a cleft of the mountain. And he re remains there and prays and fasts and is fed by a raven. And eventually, God does come to him, first as fire, then as wind, then as an earthquake. But he does not connect. It's only when he is sitting and praying and contemplating his dire situation does he hear a gentle in a gentle breeze, a still small voice. So let us imitate this great prophet. Let us be prophetic, prophetic. Let us be bold to lift up the name of Jesus Christ in this land. Let us be bold in proclaiming and condemning the false prophets around us who would confuse us and would lead us astray. Let us even though we have reached a pinnacle of a civilization and affluence, let us come back to our senses and be prophetic in that great tradition of Elijah, the prophet. But be ready to be accused. Be ready to be slandered. Be ready to be thrown off a cliff as they tried to do with Jesus Christ himself when he reminds them a prophet is not honored in his own country. So we, in this, our own country, if we are prophetic, we will be dishonored. So let us take courage and imitate the, beautif the beautiful work, the beautiful, the, the, the courage of the prophet Elijah, 
and let us deal with Jezebel, deal with the false prophets around us, and overcome our weakness by the power of God. Let us listen, because there will be tremendous distractions around us. There will be the wind, there will be fire, there will be earthquakes. But let us listen carefully and calmly for that still, small voice. And in the presence of be still and know that he is God, and then he will equip us to be in that great tradition of this prophet Elijah and be able to proclaim the glory of our God. To him be the glory now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen.